Now there should have been a, a card on your chair this morning. Would you pick that up, please? This is a word that was delivered by the Lord through Brother Keith Moore. And it has, it has been so strong with me through the years. And, and I really, in praying about you today and in praying about these meetings, I was strongly impressed of the Lord to have this printed up so that we can go down through it step by step. Thus saith the Lord, I'm rallying and raising up support to you. It will far surpass all you have previously seen or known. I'm joining to you new partners who are very strong financially and they will obey me. I am prospering your long time partners with supernatural increase and they will obey me. Mark this day, Friday, September the 20th, 2002. So we'll mark this day, Friday, September 21st, 2018. From this day, there is a release to you and to those who are joined to you and all that you need and all that you desire will now come quickly, much easier than in times before. Now I want you to recognize here that he's not just speaking to glory in me. He's speaking to those joined to this ministry. So it, all of this, if he's talking to me, he's talking to you. Amen. Much easier than in times before. It will not be by greater labor on your part, but by a supernatural multiplication and a divine release from heaven through the earth to you. And you will do this thing. He's talking to all of us now. <laughs> you will do this thing I have commanded you you will not come short. You will not fail. All this ministry that I have placed under you and your partner's hand. I, 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 I want to impress you with that. The ministry that I have placed under your hand will prosper and increase mightily. You will not lack. You will not want. You will not be diminished. Only rest in me and rejoice in me. Yes, rest and see if I will not do this thing just as I've told you and you will see the goodness and the faithfulness of the Lord in the land of the living. Yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Now, I believe it would be good if you would take this with you and put it in, particularly in the place where you pray and, and to, as you pray for glory in me and for this ministry and, and all that, that is happening around the world. Uh, remember what the Lord has said about it. Amen. Amen. Father, this is so good when we receive it this morning. We thank you and praise you that all you're doing in this earth will far surpass anything we've previously seen or known. And we believe it and we receive it today and we thank you for it in the name of Jesus. Praise God. Thank you. Come on. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Yes, praise God. Thank you, Lord. Let's open our Bibles this morning to, the, to Luke chapter 4. 
the Gospel of Luke chapter 4. I want to talk to you this morning Yes, thank you, Lord. Concerning the anointing, ministry anointing. And let's call it the anointing exchange. Uh, th this has come up, came up to me last night. I'm, I'm going to step back here and and go through something here with you. The cross is a place of exchange. I like to call it the great exchange. Jesus substitution he did nothing for himself. Everything he did was for you and for me. So he was our substitute. Now it's important, it is extremely important to understand this. I'm gonna come down there. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. If this, this is something that even people that understand it don't think about it enough. It's um, so important, so vitally important. Heaven's records show that you went to the cross, that you paid the price for your sins. Heaven's record shows that you've been to hell and suffered. Most people don't realize that. We know Jesus did it, amen. But heaven has it recorded by your name and by my name, amen. Now this, this, this is hard this is hard on the, the natural mind. You just don't, and, and we've heard so much that with, and, and never have heard anything about this. That it's kind of strange to hear it. But see, in God's eyes and in his mind, sin is finished. The sin problem has been defeated totally and completely. And the, the victory of it has been reckoned to you and to me as if we did it ourselves. Jesus has completely wiped out every single note against us. Amen. Amen. This is the ministry of reconciliation. And we need to be more aware of it and, and think about it more often. When you, begin to, when you begin to recognize that Jesus died to make you alive. So my identification is with life. Amen. Now, we as particularly as carnal minded human beings, we identify with Adam, his failure, his weakness, the death that he brought on us. Amen. It's a good thing to forgive him too. <laughs> Amen. I thought one time, when I get to heaven, I'm going to talk to him about that. <laughs> and the Lord said, no, you're not. There's not any death talk up here. We don't, we don't talk about that here. <laughs> Isn't that good? I'm glad he doesn't. If you'd leave it up to him, he don't talk about it now. Amen. 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 Because you have been made alive in Christ Jesus. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He was made sin to make us righteous. He was made sin with our sin to make us righteous with his righteousness. Isn't that good? He became weak to make us strong. He suffered our shame. This is just huge. He suffered our shame to give us his glory. Thank you, Lord Jesus. He went to hell to take us to heaven. He was condemned to set us free. There is therefore. No, wait a minute, you missed the big word. Now. Now. You can't say now a while ago. Now is always now. There is therefore. Now. No condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus. Glory to God. There is therefore, right now, right this very second, there is no condemnation for you. No condemnation. No condemnation. You and I have the utmost freedom. I mean, we have the utmost freedom to come to Jesus without shame, brother. Without shame. Yeah, but Brother Cooper, you don't know what I did. Yeah, but he knows what you did. He's there when you did it. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And he's still not condemning you over it. That's right. Now he's going to bump you and bump you and try and, try and get you over there where you quit that bawling, squalling around about it, repent, go on about your business. That's right. Receive your cleansing of the thing. Amen. There's, it's a good time to just fall on your face and say, Lord, thank you for your mercy. Yes, sir. Thank you yes, sir. for your thank mercy. You. Oh, thank you Amen. for your mercy. Amen. 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 Until you just wash every remembrance of the stupid thing you did or said. Amen. 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 And just say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Get up and continue. Yes. Get up and continue. Glory Praise Jesus. God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Depression is based on fear. Yes. Well, I just feel like there's something it's just, I just feel like God's down on me. Well, your feelings are absolutely lying to you. That's right. That's right. Absolutely lying to you. Well, I feel like he's mad at me. Well, he's not. <laughs> he was made sick with our sicknesses so that we be healed and live in divine health. He was cast out of God's presence in order to say to us, come boldly to the throne of grace. Boldly, come boldly. You belong here. Amen. Isn't it wonderful? We've been raised up together with him and made to sit together with him. There's no other angel. There's not, not one angel sitting there. They don't have the right nor the authority. Jesus is at the right hand of the Father and you and I are seated at the right hand of Jesus. Hallelujah. I tell you, this is wonderful this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Now, when you, begin to un, when, when you begin to think like this and it, you, you dwell on this and meditate on this, day and night you think about it. You force think it. You can get over into the, you just let the devil just swamp your mind with all that's bombarding him just in the natural world, politics and, and all that, and not spend any time thinking this. 
talking about this. Well, Brother Copeland, I'm just so worried about the country. Well, quit worrying about it. Amen. Amen. This country is not, not, this country is nowhere near as in deep of trouble as you think it is. Now we got business to take care of, but yeah, there it is. We have business to take care of, but we don't take care of it with a frown on our face. No, we take care of business with a smile on our face. Glory to God. Amen. Because God is right in the middle of what's happening in this United States. Did you ever stop and think that the United States is the only nation in history ever founded with the purpose of worshiping and giving praise to God? Very good friend of glory in mine, Rose Weiner, uh, was in a time of fasting. She and her prayer group, uh, her intercessory group. And, and, and the Lord Jesus came and appeared to her. And among other things that, that he said, just, just powerful. Now this is a number of years ago, but this just marked my life. And I've had it come up time and again through the years. He said, the United States was founded and formed by people who love me. He said, now I founded the nation of Israel because I love them. I'd never thought about that. But he said, this nation was founded because they love me and they founded it to worship me and I will never forget it. Whoa. Praise God. I remember that. Now, the body of Christ fooled around and let this country get in such deep trouble that it's taken a long time to get it out. They didn't speak up, just sat by and just let one atheist woman take Bibles out of school and started at, just started a ball rolling and just sat by and just kept electing the same. Old, same old. And didn't put enough, didn't put enough pressure on either party. God doesn't lay this at, at the feet of the natural sinning world. He lays it at the feet of the body of Christ. We're the ones with the authority. And we should have sense enough to know how to vote. Praise God. Come on. Yeah, but I don't like either one of them running. Then vote the platform. Well, I just think I won't vote. Well, you just chose the wrong platform. Well, I don't think that platform makes any difference. Well, why do you think they spend millions and millions and millions of dollars pushing and pushing and pushing these platforms through? Because it governs the attitude of all of the judges, it governs the edit. Whomever is in authority, listen, that platform is what is pushed. Praise God. Pastors ought to be reading that platform. You ought to be going back through that platform right now. And you can't stand up with any excuse and say, well, you know, you have to be careful what you, you don't have to be careful anymore. Jesus and Donald Trump took care of that. You can stand right in that platform and say, now I'm telling you, this is who we vote for. <laughs> Amen. And <laughs> you go read that platform and, and they, uh, they, they'll, they'll, they'll guide you for whom to vote. Amen. 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 And this election coming up is, is extremely important. Amen. Now, the great exchange, the place 
of exchange. Identification. With whom do you identify? With whom are you identifying in your daily thought life? If you're worrying, you're not identifying with Jesus. You're just not. You're identifying with the possibility of failing or somebody in your family is failing. That indicates you're carrying the care of it. The more you find yourself thinking about it, you just need to own up to it and say, you know, I'm carrying the care of this. If I could do anything about it, I'd already done it. So roll the care of it over on Jesus. Put your smile back on. Brother Copley, don't start that whining at me. <laughs> I heard it like my mama used to whirl around in that car seat. Don't make me come back there. <laughs> oh. <laughs> don't let me catch you doing that again. Well, I'm sorry you caught me the first time. <laughs> That's the problem here. I got caught. <laughs> well, you get caught with your worry face on. And you're not walking in the anointing. You're not walking in the joy. Now joy is in you whether you're using it or not. Yes. And, and I, I've, I've, over the years, I, I've really had to develop that. And um, anyway, I won't go any more in, in, any deeper into that. But now we're going to be talking about the anointing exchange. So we begin with the anointing of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Isn't that a good place to start? Yes. Verse 14, Luke 4. Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee. There went out a fame of him through all the region round about. And he taught in their synagogues being glorified of all. And he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. There was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. So he specifically took a text and from that text he preached. Now, in a moment we'll turn over. Well, let's just do it now. Hold, hold your place right there and let's go over to the book of Acts chapter 10. Now, this is at Cornelius' house, you remember. Verse 34. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. But in every nation, he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. The word, now here's what I want you to see. The word which God sent unto the children of Israel preaching peace by Jesus Christ. Jesus anointed. Very important. Jesus anointed. He was writing along with the Apostle Paul. They were saying Jesus Messiah. That's, imp that's important. Jesus, Messiah. Translated into Greek, Christ. It means to pour over, to smear or to rub onto or into. That words which God sent on the children of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ, He is Lord of all, that Word, I say you know, which was published throughout all Judea. How? Jesus preached it. 
and began from Galilee after the baptism which John preached. Now, Jesus never preached. He never did one miracle until after he was baptized in water and baptized with the Holy Spirit and power. He was, he was just as much the son of God when he was 29 as he was when he was 30. But he never preached a sermon until he was anointed to preach. Huh? Oh, this is... He never did anything in his earthly ministry as the son of God. He ministered as a man anointed to preach, teach, and heal. Amen. Amen. The religious world has totally no information, just totally no idea of that whatsoever. They just had the idea that Jesus just came into town, just started healing. But he didn't. No, he didn't. And that he just healed everybody. No, he didn't. <laughs> and there are places where he said, and he healed them all. There are other places where he said, and he healed all manner of sickness and disease among them. And then, and in his own hometown, said there he could do, could, could do no mighty works. Why? because of their unbelief. Now, what is it they didn't believe? They didn't believe what he said. <laughs> I mean, if this, you know, you don't, you don't have to be the smartest guy on the block to figure this out if you just let the word flow with you. Amen. And stop trying to make something, some great, deep, un- unsolvable solvable mystery about the thing. No, it's more simple than that. You really have to have help to misunderstand these things. And we've had some really high priced help over the years. But anyway, (laughs) now here's the message. Verse 18, he opened, he opened the book of Isaiah at the 61st chapter. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me. Anointed me to do what? Anointed me to preach. See, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So Jesus didn't come into town, just start healing. He came into town and he taught and he preached and then he healed. Amen. Because you have to get some faith into the people. So now he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. He has sent me to preach deliverance to the captives. He has sent me to preach recovering of sight to the blind. He has sent me to set at liberty them that are bruised and to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Now see, you could go, he has anointed me to preach the gospel. He has anointed me to preach, teach, and heal. Praise God. And notice to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Now, what was that? Supernatural debt cancellation. Amen. 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 That's good news. Now, if you believed this, then that that anointing would flow. So this is, this anointing, that anointing right there, of the Holy Ghost and power. But now wait a minute, wait a minute. Jesus said, you go to Jerusalem where you will receive the Holy Ghost and power. Power will come on you along with the fire. Yeah, (laughs) I love it. Oh, yeah. Holy Ghost and fire. Glory be to God. That's what the Lord said to me 
earlier about the 2018, the year of the Holy Ghost and fire. Praise God. So now when we're talking about the anointing, this, this, this anointing, this anointing of the Holy Spirit for service, the Spirit of God, when you were born again, the Spirit of God came in you to live. Amen. 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 And you could say the moment you were born again, the Spirit Jesus lives in me by his spirit. But now the baptism of the Holy Spirit is the spirit upon. And it is the gateway to the supernatural. Especially in praying, speaking in the spirit, in other tongues, the supernatural communication with the Father. Glory to God. Extremely important. So I, I just want you to just lay the, the groundwork and the bedrock for that which we are calling attention to this morning. All right. Now then, oh, oh gosh. So many ways that I'd like to go here. Let, let's go. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Yeah. Amen. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 10. Before I go there, I need to go back here to Luke 4. And he closed the book and he gave it again to the minister and sat down. The eyes of all of them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began to say unto them. Now this is a summary of what he preached there that day. This day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. Now, here's another thing that is really vital information because it, it'll change the, it changed the whole way you read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. We just read from Acts chapter 10 that he preached this message throughout all Judea, how God anointed Jesus with the Holy Ghost and power who went about doing good and healing all oppressed of the devil. So we find out right there that sickness and disease is satanic oppression. He didn't heal anybody oppressed of God. Huh? <laughs> no, no, God never made anybody sick. Praise God. Amen. Just, just always, and you know, it's very interesting. He pre preached this everywhere he went. And then from there, ministered. So if you go back and look at those different places where he preached and where he taught, always remember this is where he started. And if you believe that, Boy, you were on your way. Amen. If you didn't believe that, it's going to be a while before you get anything. Now, those in Nazareth didn't give him a chance. But if you study that closely, particularly in the book of Mark, where he records the fact that there he could do no mighty work because of their unbelief. Now, then what happened? And he went about teaching in the villages. I believe he corrected that. I don't believe they remained hostile to him. 
Amen. Amen. I just know enough about Jesus to know that, you know, he, he's an outstanding preacher, you understand. <laughs> Amen. He didn't give up on them. After all, hey, these, these, <laughs> these were family and kin folks and, the, uh, you know, and home folks, man. I mean, he's not going to give up on them. I mean, he proved that. I mean, he laid hands on, 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 on a few of them. <laughs> he, tra- he tried knowing he wasn't going to get very far with them, but he wanted them healed so bad that he just laid hands on them anyway. Yes. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> All right. Now in the 11th chapter, I mean, excuse me, the 10th chapter of the book of Isaiah, it shall come to pass in that day. Now Jesus said, this day, this scripture is fulfilled in your ears. Now what, now think a minute, what was he saying? He's saying, today I'm here. I'm here. Poor man, you don't have to stay poor anymore. Blind man, you don't have to stay blind anymore. Sick man, you don't have to stay sick anymore. I'm here. I'm here. I'm for you. I'm here. Well, I just don't know if it's God's will to heal me. Come on. I mean, what is there so special about you that God don't want you well? Well, he may be trying to teach me something. Well, if you hadn't learned by now, you're not going to learn with that sickness. All right. So, no, see there, you you bought into a lie. That's right. That's right. You bought into a lie. To start with, all you have to believe is that. Amen. 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 Because the same anointing is here this morning. That's right. As was there that day in Nazareth, as was there that day in Capernaum, as there was there that day in. in, um, us in, uh, well, I said his name all ago. In the 10th chapter of Acts, that guy. (laughs) Amen. It shall come to pass in that day, his burden shall be taken away from off your shoulder and his yoke from off your neck and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. Now that's, that word anointing is in, in some translations is translated oil. Well, the oil of the Old Testament was type and picture of the oil of the anointing of God. Hallelujah. It was the anointing oil that represented the the anointing, the pouring on of the Holy Spirit. Some translations translate it fat. And (laughs) it's interesting. I don't care which way you go with that that word. It still comes back meaning the same thing. Some have said that your neck gets so fat, the yoke won't go around it. Same thing, my brother and sister. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. But you can't get away from the fact that the Hebrew word translated destroyed is corrosion. It doesn't say the anointing breaks the yoke. It says it destroys it. And it uses the word corrosion. Now this means something. Because they're referring to the yoke of iron. Amen. Just, just study it out. Check this out. Well, what corrodes iron? Rust. You let it alone and it'll eat it completely up. Just eat that yoke The whole point is God's burden removing yoke destroying power. We're talking about the power of the living God, the power and anointing of the Holy Spirit himself. 
making that yoke unfit for the devil's use. I don't care what it is. And if you'll stay with it, he can't put it back on there. Yes, Hallelujah. Yes, what yoke? The yoke of sin, the yoke of sickness, and the yoke of poverty. Hallelujah. The curse, that threefold thing from hell. Spiritual death sickness and poverty. And this is, the, this is the destroyer of all that and everything the devil's been able to tag and tie around your neck. Praise God. Just get off of that. That's the way he loads stuff on you. Picture this, if you will. And, and as you study this, particularly through, through the old covenant, you'll, 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 you'll pick up on this. That yoke around the neck with the, slave, with the chain of a slave. Now, Now what, what suddenly have I produced? A platform upon which he can pile a burden on me, just stack it on me. Sickness, pain, poverty, trouble, broken down, worry. A worried mind is not a sound mind. We've not been given a spirit of fear, but of power and love and of a sound mind. Glory be to God. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Now over here in this 11th chapter, there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse and a branch shall grow out of his roots and the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. Now notice here, these are, these are anointings the spirit of wisdom, understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord and shall make of him quick understanding in the fear or in, in the awesome reverencing and honor of the Lord. Glory to God. And that, and that it just thrills me just to read that. That's my Lord. Is he your Lord? Yes. Then all of these same anointings are, are in you right now. They are in there right now. He's in there, they're in there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now this is what you ought to be talking about all the time. Instead of the trouble side. He's in there. We have, we, have the, we have his mind. Yes. Now, what do we have the mind of? Christ. Say it again. Christ. 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 The anointed one. Yes. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you, sir. <laughs> you taught me. Yeah. The anointed. Amen. We have the mind of Messiah. Mm -hmm. what, what, what are we saying about that? We have the, exactly the same anointing available for our minds that was on his mind while he was ministering in the earth and the same anointing that's on his, his mind this morning. Yes. Now that's enough to make you run around the room. Yes. <laughs> but like everything else, you have to appropriate it. I have to appropriate that. And in order to do it, it you, really, you, you really have to spend time meditating on this every day until you renew your mind and catch up in your mind what you already know in your heart. 
Now, the, you, I haven't said anything this morning that you didn't already know. Maybe something you hadn't heard of, but the moment we said it, it witnessed to your spirit. You already knew it. The spirit of God already in you, already had g- given you insight into that. Amen. Amen. But to think about it all the time is the key. Therefore, you don't have to med- do some meditation in it. Meditating in his word day and night. And you will observe and see how to do all that's written therein. And then you'll make your way prosperous. And then you'll have good success. And deal wisely in the affairs of life. Amen. So, this is what we're talking about when we're talking about anointings. Now, this is also the same thing, if you think about it now, let's go over to Genesis chapter 12. If you, if you just put your spiritual cap on and think in line with the Spirit of God and what you already know about Him, the blessing of the Lord. God ministered the blessing and crowned Adam with it. That was the anointing. Amen. Amen. So when you realize When God called Abram, 12th chapter of Genesis, now the Lord had said unto Abram, get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee. And I will make of thee a great nation I will bless thee. Now let me read it like that. I will anoint thee and make thy name great and thou shalt be an anointing. And thou shalt be a blessing. I will bless them that bless thee and curse them that curse thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. And this, this first three words of verse four are so powerful. And Abram departed. He didn't hang around and whine about it. Oh, well, you want me to leave home. Oh, well, you want me to leave home. I don't know. I don't want to go. I don't want to go. I don't have money to go. I don't want to go. Oh, <laughs> There you sit, born again, a new creature, baptized in the Holy Ghost, have at your disposal a supernatural language with, in, with which to communicate with the Most High God. He's giving you an assignment and you're squalling about it. Now I can get on you because I've already paid. My <laughs> I did that. And it cost me dearly. And I, it was fear-based. We were in Australia and we'd preached, uh, had the the longest tour we've ever had in in Australia. And uh, a lot of trouble going on back home. Uh, the, The thing with our dear brother Jim Baker and and all that. Did you know Jim Baker got a full pardon? Yep. Yes. Now, isn't that wonderful? Yes. You know, I, I, right, I, went up, I went up and visited him while he was, while he was in, in prison. And uh, he said, Kenneth, and, and he, didn't go, he didn't go into it and tell me any, any details about it then. He said, I had the evidence. He said, I I had the, he said, I I could have just stepped out 
and just cause an enormous amount of trouble for a bunch of people. But he said, the Lord said to me, don't do it. He said, it'll set your anointing back at least five years and you may never get it, get it back. Amen. And see, it took a while, but God caused a man to just get that in his heart. And, and but he just, he just, he just couldn't live with it. Dershowitz. He just couldn't live with that. There's something just eating on him about it. And he got in there and the, the prosecuting attorney and the judge got in some serious trouble. One of them went to prison. Neither one of them ever practiced law in this country again. Well, see, that didn't make the news. It should have. That didn't make the news. Well, all that was going on here in the United States and right in the middle of that, right in the middle of it. And here I'm preaching, of course, it's my dumb fault, but I I was preaching, you know, almost seven days a week and uh, God never called anybody to preach seven days a week. (laughs) You're supposed to rest 52 days a year. And the Lord said to me, you don't rest 52 days in five years. So I was in trouble. And uh, right in the middle of that, he said, when you get home, I want you to go on a daily broadcast. (laughs) What? (laughs) In the middle of all this, you want me to go on a daily? Man, it's my, my tired stood up and started hollering about it. I was tired. I said, Lord, I don't know why I'm physically lived through this or not. Well, now, come on now. Come, that, so what? There is such a thing as dying for this gospel. What happened to that? Well, I didn't think about that. I'm just tired. Well, I was tired. Really, really, really tired. And um, I argued with him about it all the way home on the airlines. And, and I should have, I, I just went at it in the wrong way. Well, I, I went ahead and said, well, okay, you know, I'll do it. And uh, <laughs> years went by. I'm talking about a long time. And we had some situations going on in the ministry and I'm, I'm before the Lord. I said, we need financial breakthrough about this. And I brought the scripture up to him and said, you know, you're willing and obedient to eat the good of the land. And, and he said, you don't qualify for that. <laughs> he said, you've been obedient all these years, but you haven't been, you have not been willing one day that you, he said, you haven't had anything good to say about daily television. Amen. Mm-hmm. And, 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 for, and the longer he talked, <laughs> boy, <laughs> you, know, you know the feeling. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Amen. Amen. And uh, I said, sir, 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 I love daily television. I love daily television. I love daily television. Now, and, and I'd go in there, you know, I'd go in to do the dailies and and, uh, and I'd sit down there and five, four, three. <laughs> but I decided that I love it. And then I grew to love it. Well, I don't dread it. it. And it's not a burden on me anymore. Isn't that amazing? But now see, all of that time, that thing had been lurking in there. Oh, glory to God. But it didn't take but about that long to get rid of it. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. But it was affecting the anointing. I, I want to make sure that you understand why, why I brought that up. Now then, 
Now the Lord had said unto Abram, get thee out of your country and so forth. And Abram departed. He didn't sit around and whine about it. He just got up and left. You check out Abraham. That is a key to his, to his ministry and to his life and to his success. It's a key to the anointing that is on him. It's a key to the blessing of the Lord. Amen. And to his outstanding success as a man, glory to God. And it's an outstanding example of faith. I mean, he's a hundred years old, considered not his own body now dead. Neither the deadness of Sarah's womb. But after she died, he raised another family. <laughs> oh yeah. He didn't just, God didn't just turn him on and then turn him back off. No, 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 no. Woo. I'll tell you what. <laughs> I, oh, that does a lot, does me a lot of good. Praise God. I'm telling you. Yes, sir. Come on. Somebody give the Lord a praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> now, I will bless them that bless thee. Now, here's your exchange. God called, anointed, and blessed a man. Now then, as he ministered, obeyed God, did what God told him to do, took every assignment, there were people that came in agreement with him. And so the same blessing came on them through Abraham. Can you see that? Now notice here, but there are those that were not in agreement with him. So what did God say here? God is saying, I will bless those that help you with the same blessing that's on you. And I will stop those that try to stop you and those that are joined with you. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. Now let's go to Matthew chapter 10. And notice here in verse 40, He that receiveth you receiveth me. Isn't that simple? Well, we're talking about the same thing. We're talking about the exchange. He that receives you receives me. He that receives me receives the Father. Praise God. So, if he that receives you receives me. So I have given you everything I have. Right. Now, as you go minister, you give freely. You have received freely give yeah, and they receive you. They get the, th the same thing. Amen. Thank you. Lord. Thank you. So he that receives a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. Now, one translation said, he that receives a prophet because he is a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. Now, what is the prophet's reward? It has to do with the prophet's anointing. You, if you seek the Lord and you allow him to place you in the church he's designed you to be in and the church he's designed for you. A lot of people in the wrong sheepfold. So that, that makes a lot of difference. But if you're, you seek the Lord and uh, 
Now, what are you laughing about? <laughs> now, when we're in our church, then the anointing on your pastor, you should be functioning in that same anointing. You're part of that body. That pastor's not anointed for himself. He's anointed for the body of that church. Amen. Amen. Now, the, this, this is true of the churches that the Apostle Paul founded. Amen. So you, you, should, you should be expecting to function in that same anointing. Thank you, Lord. You're a part of that body. Now then, thank you, Lord. Let's go now to the book of Philippians. And with that, the things in mind that, that we have talked about, the book of Philippians is a partner letter. Years ago, <laughs> I was, um, I was in the home with, with Brother Roberts and Gloria and I had spent the weekend there at his place and he and Miss Evelyn and he said, now in the morning, I, I'm where I want you to meet me in, in, in my study. He said, I want you to help me write my partner letter. And he said, uh, we'll, we'll go down about eight o'clock and we're going to we're going to write my partner letter. I said, good. So we sat down there. Uh, he was sitting behind his desk and I was sitting off to one side. He picked his Bible up and he said, what is that? I said, it's the word of God. He said, what is that? Well, now you know you've been had. I mean, <laughs> just about anything I can think of is not going to be the answer to this. <laughs> and he, he, hollered almost at the top of his voice. He had that Bible in his hands like this. And Roy, he's about as far away from, from me to you. He said, they're letters. <laughs> and he hit me with that Bible. <laughs> Boy, I mean hard. Hit me right in the chest with it. I grabbed it. <laughs> letters. And he said, they're just as anointed today as they were the day they were written. Yeah. <laughs> Man, it marked my life forever. Wow. And he started talking to me about writing my partners every month. Now, I, up to that time, I had been writing my partners more in, the, in line as, as a kind of a newsletter kind of thing. And, uh, but I didn't do it every month. But boy, I'm telling you, I did after that day until this day. Every month. Every month. Now he said it's a lifelong commitment. As long as you're alive on this earth and as long as you're preaching the gospel, which is going to be until the day I die. I don't quit. Amen. And he said, uh, it's, it's a commitment. And you're not writing the letter to get your needs met. You're writing the letter to help them get their needs met. Praise God. Amen. So Paul and Timothy, the servants of Jesus Christ, to all the saints in Christ Jesus, which are at Philippi with the bishops and deacons, grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God upon every remembrance of you always in every prayer of mine for you all making request with joy for your fellowship. Now, you remember in Luke 5, 7, when Jesus was in the boat and they began to, they, they, they just loaded that boat. And they, it, it actually says they called upon their partners. It's exactly the same word as translated fellowship here. And fellowship, uh, 
particularly concerning the old, older English, but even today, that word is used um, among British people as a form to, uh, of partnership. Those, those folks are, and they're in a fellowship with one another. It means the same thing. So, for your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will, say will. will. He will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Even as it is meet or right, R-I-G-H-T, even as it is right for me to think this of you all, because I have you in my heart. Inasmuch both in my bonds and in the defense and the confirmation of the gospel. You all are partakers of my grace. You're partakers of my calling. Well, that includes the anointing. Amen. I mean, I don't care who you are, you're called of God. You're anointed of him to carry out the calling to which you're called. I mean, whether you're in the fivefold ministry or not, if God's called you to be a public school teacher, there's an anointing to do that. Yeah, but they won't live. And don't talk talking about what they won't let you do. And get over in that anointing. God will show you a way to get it across. And the anointing on you will change the school. Amen. I said the anointing on you will change the school. If you're called and anointed to be in the, in the automobile business. I, uh, oh Lord. <laughs> this is back uh, Kenneth B.C. <laughs> and uh, I was in a mess. And um, I, I was uh, in a little town of Camden there. I had met and fallen in love with Gloria and and ask her to marry me on the first date. And she is, she is dumb enough to say yes, uh, brilliant enough to say yes. <laughs> she went now and said, what have I done? I don't even know this guy. Oh, well, I'll get out of it later. <laughs> In April, it'll be 57 years. She's not out of it yet. <laughs> but, oh, just absolutely no money at all. And, um, and the little job that I was on there was over. And so <laughs> I'd, been, I'd been driving the, the, the uh, car, the, the airport car, which was, well, anyway. <laughs> but I had to have, I'd have a car of some kind. So, man, I didn't, I, I, only, I had less than $200. $135. What kind of car are you gonna buy for $135? <laughs> But I, I had met the man before with my boss who was in the airplane and car business that owned the, the Chevrolet dealership there in Camden. So I went down there to see him and I just went in there and just, you know, just told him the whole thing. And I said, I don't know. I just can't, I just don't have any other way to go about this. And this is all I've got. And uh, he sat there a minute. He said, Kenneth, you trust me in this? I said, <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> so we got in his car and we drove down to the, uh, the uh, shop. And there was absolutely the ugliest 54 Chevrolet I have ever <laughs> seen in my life. This thing, it had been, it, it had been yellow, had been yellow and green, the yellow with a green top. And it had a touch of leprosy on top. <laughs> the, the headliner was hanging down in the back seat. My heart kind of dropped, but I mean, hey. 
He said, Kenneth, I traded for this thing. But he said, I know more than got it traded for and the transmission went out on it. Well, he said, I think I can't sell anything, the transmission gone. And he said, then I know more than got, he said, I just got the transmission overhauled and the engine blew up. And he said, I had to put a new engine in this thing. Now he said, Kenneth, now you have to understand now, this is 1961. And uh, he said, I've got over $700 in this thing. Well, that's, you know, that, that's several thousands of dollars in a car that's <laughs> not worth anything, really. And he said, I did put a new set of tires on. <laughs> Will this seat meet your need? I said, yes, sir. <laughs> Are you kidding me? I got in that thing. I want you to know it ran. I mean, that thing just ran so good. It's ugly as a mud fence, but it, it ran so good. Glory to God. I don't know. They may have, there it is right there. That's old Yeller. <laughs> oh, that thing ran good. That thing ran so good. Now, I told you all that to tell you this. I found out years, years, years later, the man that owned that dealership was president of the Full Gospel Businessmen's Fellowship. <laughs> the anointing of God was on him. Yes, sir. Because glory and I had a date with destiny. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. And he was functioning in that anointing that day. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, oh, glory be to God. Glory be to God. Even that is right for me to think this of you all because I have you in my heart. Inasmuch as both in my bonds and in the defense and in the confirmation of the gospel, you all are partakers of my grace. Now this is the church where he and Silas were in prison right there in Philippi. They understood something about the anointing on this man when he's in prison. Because that very pastor was the jailer. He was there. He saw it. He heard him singing in the midnight time. He heard Silas praising and shouting. All the prisoners heard him. He heard him. He knew what was in this man. I'm the, hey. He understood what was in him. You mean to tell me I can have the same anointing on me that Paul and Silas had on them that night when that jail shook and the glory fell in that place and none of us could move? And you can imagine what was happening as pastor read this letter to that congregation. Whoa. Don't you, don't you know those guys that were in there and now had families and they're sitting there listening to this letter and they're, re, they're reliving that night and they're just frozen in place, stunned by an earthquake that only happened in one spot. <laughs> Didn't affect the rest of the town at all, just in this prison. And it was a funny kind of quake because all of our chains fell off yes, sir. That's right. and all the doors whoosh, opened up. Yes, sir. That's right. Boy, there's some angels doing some work in there that night, wasn't yes, there? Sir. <laughs> yeah. Well, hey, same angels are here today. Yes, right. Amen. You have your angel. I have my angel. 
And, and, and the more intense you are about what God's called you to do, and the, the more intense you are about it, then the more angels are assigned to you to work with you in your projects and what you're doing for the kingdom of God. Whether you're in the, whether you're in the fivefold ministry or not. Let's use the school teacher example again. Let's use the man at the car business again. Amen. If you if, if you'll put your angels to work in that situation, ministering spirits, uh, uh, prepare my class tomorrow. Now I don't quite know just exactly what I'm going to do with this 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 ungodly mess they've handed me, but you know, <laughs> and you'll turn it for me, because I'm not going to compromise. I'm not going to go in there and tell little boys that they're little girls if they want to be. I'm not doing that. And you, and you may hear that morning, you may hear, go in there and tell him you quit. I got another deal for you. <laughs> Amen. Or he may tell you, you just stick with your guns. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. Come on, come on, come on. Now, the same anointing on him was available to them because they were the only church supporting him financially. Huge. It is huge. Praise God. Now, I want to go on over here. Verse 19. For I know that this shall turn to my salvation through your prayer and the supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ according to my earnest expectation and my hope that in nothing I shall be ashamed, but that with all boldness as always. So now also Christ shall be manifested in my body, whether it be by life or death for me to live as Christ and to die as gain. But if I live in the flesh, this is the fruit of my labor. Yet what I shall choose, I know not. For I'm in a strait between two, having a desire to depart and to be with Christ, which is far better. I believe he made this choice while he's writing this letter. Yes. Nevertheless, to abide in the flesh is more needful for you. Yes. Now notice he had a choice. Yes. Yep. I can go or I can stay. I can go or I can stay. But I've got a partnership to fulfill. I don't know, that, that, that really strikes my spirit. I have a partnership with you that I need to fulfill here. And so I'm not gone yet. I'm not gone yet. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, the anointing, we know what the anointing was that, that came on him when, when he was in bonds. Now, it was the, not only the anointing to break free, but that anointing, just I refuse to quit. I'm not going to quit. You have to kill me to make me quit, and you can't do it. Yeah. That's right. You can't do it. Amen. Amen. It is strongly, strongly apparent that he finished his course. Yep. He got it done. Amen. 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 That he didn't have to stay here any longer if he didn't want to. So in order for a higher resurrection. He submitted himself to execution. It's all in there. Yeah, it's all in there. He could have just continued there in Rome. He had great favor. He had great favor. He could have just continued there in his own house, however long he wanted to. No, he said, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go for, I'm going to go for the whole cookie. <laughs> I'm going to go for the whole thing. No, no, now, yeah, now, come on, come on, cut this thing off. C cut this head off. I'm done. 
Ain't no use me just dying in my sleep. Yeah. <laughs> oh, what a man. Yeah. <laughs> Glory to God, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. What about in the defense of the gospel? There is anointings. There are anointings to defend this gospel. Not, I'm not talking about defending yourself. I'm talking about defending this gospel. Amen. Where, of course, it may include your own personal defense, but defending this gospel. What about just standing up and just preaching it anyway? And just go on, just preach it. Praise God. Defend this gospel with your very life. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. And now, what about the confirmation? Well, I need to talk to you a little bit more about that. Uh, when uh, Mr. Grassley's office came out against uh, six churches, and that thing was a, I, I, didn't, I didn't know the truth about that thing until, well, I'd heard it, but I didn't know it for a fact until just recently. There was a woman on <laughs> Mr. Grassley's staff that believed Creflo Dollar was supposed to marry her. Well, you know, Taffy might have something to say about that. <laughs> so she conjured this deal up about going after Creflo. I, I, I believe there's, I, I, I believe there's wrongdoing. I need it. And she built this case up in Mr. Grassley's staff. And when it got up to him, he said, well, now you can't just go after one. So they went after all the rest of us in order for her to attack Creflo Dollar because she hated him. Well, it cost every one of us over a million dollars to defend it. Now, the anointing to defend the gospel meant that all of us had to be very, very, very cautious to, to not get out of love with anybody there. Oh, this thing would get, go from bad to worse. Yep. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And you just keep a smile on your face. <laughs> and you do what's right in the eyes of God. Yep. And they came down and wanted information. And we said, no, you can't have it. I won't give it to you. I gave my word to the Lord Jesus Christ mm -hmm. when I went in this ministry that I would not give the names of my partners or anybody that does business with this ministry, anybody that buys a tape, anybody that's on our list. I will not give, I won't even give it to another ministry. I'm sure not going to give it to you. <laughs> now, and we, we answered each, each question. We answered it. The news media came out and said we didn't answer it at all, but those folks will lie to you, you know. So anyway, now this was engineered to cause your partners, your donors, yeah. huh, to stop and say, wait a minute, whoa, 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 wait, wait a minute here. I, I'm, not, I'm not giving anything more in there until I find out what's the matter with this. <laughs> then your income starts down. Yeah. And so then you turn around and say, well, you know, I, I got to stop this some way or another. And so I'll give you the information you're asking for. Well, once, once you give it, you're, it's not confidential anymore. You've opened it. Man, I'm telling you, you've got a can of worms open. You wish you hadn't done. And now the, all of the names and everything you swore to protect are just out there for anybody. So, I mean, and Gloria and I just told them. Uh, and somebody said, well, you go to jail. I said, well, I preached in jails before. <laughs> 
I said, well, matter of fact, I'm committed to do that. And it, that'd be just fine. <laughs> and so um, now, and the, the, the more it went on, the happier I got. I just got thrilled with it. I, it tickled me to, to get to just stand up and just, just talk bold. I mean, you know, because I know they ain't going to do nothing to me. The last thing they want to do is put me in jail. <laughs> you ain't never heard a scream like you hear. Because <laughs> I mean, man, I'm telling you, I go to preaching in that prison. I mean, I'm at midnight and the prisoners will hear me. <laughs> they didn't caught them a cat they don't want to hold. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Amen. Oh, and I look back on it now, and it, it's thrilling what happened. But out of all that, now listen to me, listen to me. I woke up one morning. Yeah. That's the answer to this. I called John, my son, I called him in. I said, now here's what the Lord said for us to do. We, uh, uh, a young man that used to be on our team and went to EMIC was now a news cameraman at one of the stations in Dallas. I said, call him and have him to meet you at the, on the front steps of the Internal Revenue Office in Dallas. <laughs> and you, and, and the Lord said, We'll write a letter inviting the IRS to come in at any time. Anytime they care to and do a full church inquiry. And say, Mr. Grassley, and, and, and I said, John, take all of the documents and everything that, that they're asking for and stack them up and have, have the representative come out there on the front step and say, now, and right face the camera. <laughs> Mr. Grashley, here's all the information you asked for. It's right here and, and give the, the address at the office there in Dallas, along with a letter inviting the Internal Revenue to come in and do a full audit on us anytime they care. Good day, sir. It was over. It was absolutely over. I didn't think of that. The anointing. The wisdom of God came forth. The anointing to defend the gospel. And it was flat over. And after they turned the cameras off, <laughs> that, that IRS guy said to John, he said, we're not coming over there and audit y'all. He said, we look at your books every year. He said, we know what y'all are about. And he said, I don't much care for them trying to tell us how to run our business anyhow. <laughs> <laughs> now see, everybody thinks the IRS is your enemy. No, they're not. Uh -uh. They are if you think they are, because you will act like they are and you'll talk like they are and they are. But when the anointing to defend comes in, Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But now I'm telling you right now, if you're going to make an invitation like that, your books better be in order. I'm telling you for sure. And uh, our, our lead attorney told me, he said, you know, of course, I ask, we asked him about that before we did it. He said, absolutely, tell him. And he told me, he said, now, Kenneth, he said, I, I'm sorry to say there, there's... Uh, there are ministries that couldn't afford to say that. Yeah. Yeah. But he said, thank God you can with this one. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. And now this final one, the confirmation of the gospel. Look there in that last chapter of the book of Mark. Glory to God. Oh, thank you, Jesus. And he said unto them, 
Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Well, we are doing that. I mean, literally doing that. Now, there are places in this world we hadn't been yet, but wherever it is, we're going. Amen. I'm telling you, in 21 days in the month of May of this year, thank you, Jesus, and thank you, partners, for buying that Gulf Stream 5. Whoa! 21 days! We flew that thing 70 hours, touched four continents, preached face to faith, face to face with 125,000 people. We were in Lagos, Nigeria. (laughs) We were already scheduled to go to Lima, Peru. And the Lord said, I need you in Jerusalem for the dedication of the embassy. I said, yes, sir, I'll be there. And so we just gashed that thing up <laughs> and, and went to, uh, landed at Tel Aviv, went to Jerusalem, and I slept most of the trips. Amen. 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 <laughs> oh, that trip to Lagos in the tin, you have to stop, you know, a couple of times. Not in that G5. Well, we stopped once. And uh, we, we, had, we had the gas, we could go the whole route. But we just stopped in Wilmington and, and fueled there. And, and so uh, we had supper and, and I just got back there. In fact, David came back and said, uh, I'm, come on, make your bed up back there. <laughs> I'm not used to this, you understand? <laughs> I'm used to even if I'm not flying, I'm sitting up. Yeah. And I went back there put my pajamas on. (laughs) (laughs) And went to bed. And I woke up. I actually slept in an airplane. I trained myself for years not to sleep in an airplane because I was flying them. That ain't no time to go to sleep. (laughs) And I slept. And I thought, well, you know, I, don't, I lost track of the time. I maybe I ought to get up. And, and Dave knocked on the door. He said, boss, you better get up. We're going to be landing in Legos in you know, the next 15 minutes or so. Whoa, man. <laughs> I went to scrambling around there and got dressed. And I'm, I'm there. Amen. Now you ought to be believing for your dream. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because you've provided mine. You and Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. He that believes will be saved and he that and baptized, but he that believeth not shall be damned. These signs shall follow them that believe. These are supernatural signs, every one of them. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up servants, serpents like the apostle Paul did uh, on the island and just shook him off. And if they drink any deadly thing, it'll not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. So then after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. And they went forth and preached everywhere. They went forth and preached everywhere. The Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following. That's the confirmation of the gospel. Signs following. These signs right here. Not only that, the signs that follow this ministry, glory to God, ought to be following you. You're a partner to this ministry, glory to God. Hey, are you listening to me? They, they say, if you believe for them, they'll follow you everywhere you go. A message will come in your heart to deliver somebody in a restaurant. A message will come into your heart. You'll stand up in church and give forth a message. And signs following. With signs following. I said with signs following. But it will not happen until you appropriate it by faith. And I believe I received that. I so into this thing with Brother Copeland. And now the anointing is on him, is on me. And I plan to take advantage of it. Glory be to God. I said, glory be to God. 
Glory be to God. Do you grasp, I know you do, that concept? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Come on, let's praise him. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now this should make even more, that that thing we read at the beginning here that Brother Moore uh, 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 spoke over glory in me, that should make this even more powerful, even stronger. Praise God. 